kids, welcome to VeggieTales. I'm Bob the Tomato. I am Buzz Lightyear. I come in peace. Uh, Larry, what are you up to? I am Mrs. Nesbitt. <laughs> All right, buddy, hang on. Roll film! You mean old potato? Wait, Bo Peep, or your sheep get run over! Oh, they help us. Oh no! Not my sheep on somebody do something. Reach for the sky. Oh no! Sheriff Wayne! I'm here to stop you, one Ed Bart. How do you know it was me? Are you gonna come quietly? You can't touch me, Sheriff Wade! I brought my attack dog with a billion force field! I brought my dinosaur who eats force field dogs. You're going to jail, Bart. Say goodbye to the wife and tater tots. <laughs> You're my favorite deputy. Let's round up the cattle. Round them up, cowboy. The coast is clear. Annie has left the room. I repeat, Annie has left the room. Edges three and up. Three and up. It's written on my box. How clear can it be? Maybe as clear as me. I am Annie's new birthday present. There doesn't seem to be any sign of intelligent life anywhere. Not even a tornado. Hi, kids. Uh, not tornado. Tomato. As a member of the Leech Universe Protection Unit of the Space Ranger Corps, I protect the galaxy from the threat of invasion from the evil Emperor Zerg. Sworn enemy of the Galactic Alliance. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, that's exactly what this bot says. Be careful with that. That's my only spaceship. Without that, I would not be able to get out of here. I have a story to tell you. It's about my journey. You actually think you're the real Buzz Lightyear. Oh, all this time I thought it was an act. You're mocking me, aren't you? Buzz, look at an alien. What were? <laughs> you are made of plastic. You are made of metal and you don't do anything. I can't think of the word. I think the word you're looking for is Space Ranger. Mr. Lightyear, now I'm curious. What does Space Ranger actually do? He is not a Space Ranger. I most certainly am a Space Ranger. You are a toy. You can't actually fly. 
Can. Can't. Can. Can't. Can. Whoa! Oh, wow, you flew magnificently! Really, Rex? I've just about had it with you being impressed by everything besides that was not flying. That was falling with style. Whoa! That was unnecessarily dramatic, but it was cool. How do you know what's cool? You live your whole life in an oven. But now we have an actual emergency, and the having a yard sale. 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 A yard. Don't you dare. A yard sale. Oh, never mind. Are you sure? I thought he still plays with his toys, especially his Vado game. I'm sure he's playing it in the countertop right now. He's better at this than I have ever been at anything. My son has a gift. He has a gift, and once you acknowledge that, then maybe we'll have something to talk about. That kind of reminds me of when I was on the countertop to eat blue cucumbers and post it on YouTube during New Year's Day. Seaman Flip will not comment on this video. At least I hope he does not, because every winter on New Year's Day, my cousin from Moose Lake gives me a blue cucumber dessert that's delicious. Yeah, I really hope he doesn't comment. Oh good, he did not comment. Our secret is safe. I was dressed like Skip from the League of Incredible Vegetables. I almost forgot about that day. Junior, we don't want to be late for that yard sale. Let's watch your room and collect the toys you don't use anymore. Oh, Dad. So excited to have this yard sale. We're going to make so much money. This will be the best yard sale ever. Yard sale. Quick, emergency protocols. I call the extremely precarious comfortable pillow. I can hide under it when I need gets here. No, don't hide under the pillow. That's my rightful hiding spot. And he's here. There's no more time. Quick, hiding places, everybody. Really, Woody? You took my hiding spot. I'm so excited about this yard sale. Where did all my toys go? Thank you.
Everybody move! Hello, quick! He took Wheezy quick! Let's hop under the window and think of a plan! Don't worry, Wheezy. I will save the day. Star Command! Do you read me? Oh no, Larry Lightyear! Do not fantasize about you saving Wheezy in your spaceship! Oh, never mind. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff! We have a liftoff! It's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Larry here. Larry here. Larry here. Larry here. I think someone has been fantasizing too much. Let's go underneath the window like Mr. Potato once said to discuss our options. You must save him, Woody. You're right. I'm a sheriff. I must make it my duty to save Wheezy and all the toys at all cost. I'm coming for you, Wheezy. Don't do it, Woody, you. We love you. You're right, Rex. It's too dangerous. I must disguise myself as a sheep. Let me look in the toy box. And I'm so glad you like your dinosaur costume I got you for your birthday. But I thought you were allergic to sheep. You're right. I am allergic to sheep. I am allergic to many things. Cats, dogs, annoying space rangers, and sheep. Well, you get the point. But apparently I will stuff myself inside a toy sheep in order to save Wheezy. You can say that again. But apparently I will stuff myself inside a toy sheep in order to save Wheezy. You can say that again. But apparently I will stuff myself inside a toy sheep in order to save Wheezy. You can say that again. No wait, don't make him say it again. I can't bear to hear him say the same thing like a broken record. You can say that again. But apparently I will stuff myself inside a toy sheep in order to save Wheezy. Now look at what you've done. That will be the only thing I'm dreaming about tonight. You know, maybe we should share stories of our past. Maybe that will inspire us and give us courage. I'll go first. Close your eyes. It was a very dark and scary night. All I had to hold on to was my cowboy shows. I had these growing up when I was a wee tomato, because my uncle was a farmer and my aunt was a cowgirl. Uh, Buzz, you can open your eyes now, so that you can see the picture I drew with crayons. This is a picture of me when I was only five and a half years old. You know, we tomatoes like to count the half years as well. I guess you can say it runs in the family. I loved my new brown book that I received for my birthday, and it meant a lot to me. I named him after my owner, Annie. And he is such a nice kid. And he really deserved all the toys he got. Well, almost all of them. There was still one toy that bothered me so much. It took to so annoying even mentioning his name is an impossibility. His name rhymes with Fuzz Bright Year. But of course I won't say his actual name. Fuzz Bright Year. I wonder who that could be. Anyway, he is still very annoying even to this day. This leads us to my next drawing. One day, everything changed. When middle school was approaching, everyone was into NASA and new space technologies. And then, once the first rocket launched to Mars, everyone wanted space toys, and they didn't want to play with cowboy dolls with lame shows and lassos. It, it was a disaster. They said they'd be better next time, but no way. <laughs> uh, mercy, I guess everyone deserves a second chance. Everyone but you. After the way and he treated you, I could never forgive him for it. Maybe I need to rewatch the VeggieTales episode about the Grapes of Wrath and learn a lesson about forgiveness, especially right now, because right now I'm so angry that I'm red. Wait, I'm already red. Oh, never mind. I don't think that helped us. I think that just got us more angry. I agree with Rex on this one. You want to hear an inspiring story? Let the master show how it's done. Who's the master? Buzz Lightyear.
I drew a few pictures with some frames to show you the history of myself. Buzz Lightyear. It's not the easiest being the only cucumber in the family. My mother was a pickle, my father was a zucchini, but I'm okay with that now. You see, everyone used to call me names like Pickle Boy, and I used to get really upset about it in middle school, but thankfully those years are over. As you can see in the picture, I was a very happy lad. There was nothing in the world that would ever bother me. That is, until I graduated from high school in hypergalactic chemistry 101. When I was little, I always wanted to fly to outer space and see what infinity and beyond really looks like. So for my birthday, my mother got me this outer space costume, and I love it so much that I wear it even today. Since then, things were never the same. Zerg showed up in my life. Zerg is a bully from college that never helped me at all whatsoever. He just wanted to be more important than me. You see, as ridiculous as this sounds, his favorite color is purple. And I was wearing a purple space outfit. I was wearing his favorite color. And he did not like it one day. Therefore, he had a plan to rule the entire galaxy. But just then, I had an idea. An idea that would change the world forever. I was not only an engineer, I was also a mechanic and an inventor. I invented my Lightyear Laser 4000. Patent pending, of course. Zerg had me thinking. If it was his idea to destroy the world. It was my duty to save it. I pointed my laser at him, and this ruined his cape. So therefore he could not fly anymore. I was victorious, but not only right now. My victory will continue to infinity and beyond. That was a little too inspiring. Maybe we should gather around the window and think of a plan regarding our options. You guys go ahead and do that while I sleep. I'm tired. Options. 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 Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. I can tell my parents. Hey, folks, the bad news is the quiz is done. The good news is we discussed our options and got nowhere. Mr. Potato Lunt, stop being sarcastic. You were sarcastic ever since Rekshek and Benny. And even though it may have been funny in the pirates who don't do anything, your sarcasm is not funny anymore. Besides, it is kind of bothering me. That's because everything bothers you. Oh man, Roasted Dusted. Why weren't you in Lund's Roasting Academy? You would have become the champion of the roasters. In fact, I can rant on for five minutes about how disappointed I am. That you did not sign up for the Roasting Academy. In fact, I think I will. For score and seven years ago, a founding fathers of Lund's Roasting Academy strive to adhere to the following rank. This is gonna be a long night. As I was saying, I could have made millions of dollars if the Roasting Academy did not collapse. Dr. Goliath the Orange, because clumsiness and Mr. Nether's outrageous performance in my Roasting Academy, I had no choice but to shut down the theater temporarily. You know, nobody can understand a word you're saying. I am totally aware of this, but I am so angry that I had to at least try and give it a shot. Any ideas made in Blueberry Ball? B, you may be the only sensible toy left. At least the only sensible toy that we can actually understand. I don't have a lot of experience with penguins. I usually hang around with my sheep, but it's worth a try. Finally, a toy with a new dot voice that I can actually understand. Don't go out of your own world. What do you mean? Well, you were talking about Uber Duck, and that's breaking the fourth wall. Uh, let's just focus on our own world. That's enough to take care of right now. Oh, right, sorry. As you were saying, Madame Blueberry Ball Peep. Yes, well, I had an idea I think might work. My youth inspired me to come up with this idea. So hear me out. I love all different kinds of French food. Maybe we can stuff ourselves into a baguette and escape from Andy so that we can save Wizzy. I don't know if it will work, but it's worth a try. 
That's preposterous. There's no way I'm stuffing myself inside a big yet. Oh no, there's no time. I see Sid coming towards our house. <laughs> Oh man, it's raining. This is the story of Sid. I drew these pictures with crayons so you can see the history of Sid. It is a mean old bully. The very first time he bullied anybody was when he bullied Andy in the local playground next to Andy's house. Andy was pretending to be Plantasaurus, when suddenly Sid squashed Andy like peace up. In fact, Andy had some friends who were gathered with him to play soccer, and some of his friends were peas. They were so shocked that Sid would squash Andy that they ran away and hid so that they would not become pea soup like their cousins. Andy was crying, so he ran to his tree house. The thing about Andy's tree house is that it is very peaceful and quiet. So this gave Andy some time to rest and think about the day, and time to process his joys and his frustrations. Sometimes he would like to daydream. However, he would often get in trouble for daydreaming. Actually, he would always get in trouble for daydreaming. One day, Andy was so upset that he did not face up to Sid that he pretended he was the star of a famous football league championship, and he dreamed he was being a firefighter right before the game, and then he dreamed he scored 9,000 touchdowns in one game. Sooner or later, Annie knew he would have to face up to Sid, and so one of his best friends, Annie, was comforting Annie be because he was so upset. Invited him over for a cup of tea, but she, but Annie just wanted to be sad and miserable by himself. However, Annie's other friend, Laura, told him that he was not brave enough to face up to Sid. And that made him so angry, that made Annie so angry that he finally faced up to Sid after talking with his father about how an asparagus sometimes has to do what an asparagus has to do. Sid was so angry that he wanted to make Annie into a veggie souffle, but then Annie's friends said that if Sid was going to squash Annie, he would have to squash him as well. Sid did not like this one bit. Sid said that he was going home to play video games. What he really meant to say was that he was going home to think of a plan to get revenge upon any. So Sid was thinking, and thinking, and thinking. He thought so hard that he was thinking philosophically. He never was smart in school, but he was thinking so much that he began to wonder what a thought really is philosophically. Just then Sid had an idea. It's such a brilliant idea that he was bouncing up and down and singing opera, not literally, of course. But he had a plan that would be a game changer. He wanted to join a philosophy club. Not only do they give out incredible prizes, but if you're the winner of a philosophical debate, you also get unlimited candy and food for life. This was an offer Sid couldn't refuse. So he joined the philosophy club, and he made some new friends. In fact, he made several new friends. He even found someone that he wanted to ask to the local dance. But most importantly, he saw the prize right before his very eyes. This was a bowl filled with so much food. In fact, there was so much food the floor holding the food was about to break. It was so excited that he leaped for joy. So right before the contest was about to begin, he raised his glass of orange juice and prepared a toast. This was a toast to his victory celebrations, and he invited everyone to his victory party because he was that confident that he was going to win the philosophy debate. Little did he know that there would be major consequences for being so prideful and ended himself. He had no idea what was to come. His friend Bobby Bernhard spoke first. He was talking about himself as a GERD, asking himself, Do we GERDs actually know what humans think of us? What if humans think of us only as food, and not actual GERDs with real minds? This tension needs to end, and it is time we find where this tension stems from. No pun intended relating to stems on GERDs. Everyone laughed at his joke and Sid became jealous. Sid became so envious of his friend that he stole the microphone from him and began to speak. Sid had a huge philosophical debate prepared about the seeds we plant in others. No pun intended, and I say this as a tomato. Anyway, Sid was saying that we can plant good seeds in others, or we can plant bad ones, and everyone was convinced at Sid's observation. But th th they were not as convinced about his observation as they were with Bobby Bernhard's observations and jokes. Bobby won the first round of debates, but this is not the end of the story. There was still another second round of debates to be held the next Friday, and so this time Sid was prepared. He was researching on Wikipedia so much that he fell asleep. He researched a category from every letter of the alphabet. He researched on a pole's bandanas, cats, dogs, elephants, freezers, gains, arrows, igloos, jewels, kites, lemons, mirrors, networks, ovals, pineapples, quilts, rods, shoelaces, Time machines, universal study as beans, washing machines, holophones, yams, and zebras. 
He researched so much that he completed his doctoral dissertation that they... He thought he had this in the bag. <laughs> then he was so wrong, he thought he was going to finish that debate as a champion. Grab your popcorn and hold on to your coffee mugs, because the drama just increases for Sid. Sid thought he was going to win first place in that competition, and he thought he was going to win the huge ball of snacks and take home the trophy. But boy, was he wrong. As you can see in this picture, Sid lost to the dark crowd. Sid got third place, which is really nothing to sneeze at. But you have to remember that Sid was a very competitive GERD. He did not want to get third place. He wanted to get second place. Get first place. And so he stopped being a philosopher. He stopped going to the debate clubs. And he stopped going to school. There was only one passion that was really calling his name video games. He played video games in the morning. He played video games at noon, he played video games in the evening, and guess what? He even played video games at night. Sometimes he would even play during midnight. He would sometimes go on the swings in the playground. He got bored and tired of that one day after he was trying to pound Junior. But then his friends told him he would have to pound them up too. However, his dad wanted him to be saving money and going to college, and not playing video games. He wanted him to be able to memorize famous speeches, write historical documents of the founding vegetables of the countertop, and do so much math and many cool things. However, Gerd and I mean Sid did not want to do that, so he moved from his hometown, and he moved to where everybody lived in the wonderful Wizard of Hez. That is when he told Junior to do, hey, do what he wanted to do, and not what his parents wanted him to do. However, Junior did not listen to him at first, and he was sad, but then Junior, I mean Andy, was really thinking about the words Sid was saying. He pondered these words a lot. Sid, however, has a secret love life that th 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 certainly anyone knows about. Oh boy, I can't wait to tell you this story. This story is so cute and filled with drama. In fact, it is filled with so much drama that you might fall off of your own chair. So hold on to your chair, fasten your seat belts, and get ready for the story of Sid's love life. Part 1. The Video Game of Life Sid was in metal stool, and this is how it all started. He saw a kid named Andy, and Andy had many interests in schoolmates. Uh, science, chemistry, biology, economics, and the list could go on forever. Sid was the complete opposite. That Sid was a complete cutch potato who would not move one inch away from his cutch. He loved to do three things. A karaoke machine, a watch football, and eat chips while playing video games. So as you can guess, the school had a prom that was coming very soon, but all the girls were thinking about going to the prom with Andy instead of Sid. I mean, why would anyone go with Sid? He never washed his face. He could never remember the fancy words the science teacher mentioned in preparation for the final exam, and Sid was never good at talking with the ladies. However, he did have this one interaction with a certain girl. It was one conversation that would change his life forever if this girl named Emily Atkins was in the playground, and Sid was very familiar with going to the playground. But this time there was someone he actually did not want to bully. This girl looked so sweet, and her smile made Sid think about violin music playing in the background with candles and wine. I guess you could say it was love at first sight. It was so nervous about talking with her and starting a conversation that he didn't know what to say and so he grabbed a piece of candy that was lying around in his pocket for years and he did the only thing that came to his mind he smeared the candy on his face came over to emily atkinson and showed her his face smeared with the candy and she thought it was so funny however that was the only time sid ever spoke to her he knew he had to be with her but he did not have enough courage to approach her and talk to her again he had enough courage to bully Annie. He even had enough courage to play the world's hardest video game. And he even holds a world record for playing the longest video game and completing every level without making one single mistake in the game. He was very smart when it came to the television and games, but even with this only accomplishment throughout his whole life, he still did not have enough courage to... To face Emily Atkinson, therefore, he had a plan. He got out a blueprint plan of the next time he was going to accidentally bump into her, but of course, this was a plan for a pretend accident to bump into Emily Atkinson. The plan was to enroll in high school, stop by in the hallway before Emily's biology class and bump into her while she is trying to carry four textbooks in her hands, and the textbooks would fall, and a plan to try to pick them up at the same time she is picking the textbooks up. So this way they went, they would hold hands and look each other in the A. He thought he had a brilliant plan, but he was really putting all his eggs into one basket this time. 
When he tried to enroll in the school, the school asked him for his middle school grades, and they were all failing grades. Therefore, the school did not let him in, so he had to apply to be a janitor. This worked, and so now he would have a perfect excuse to be in the hallway. He had to clean the floor, he had to clean the lockers. He could claim that one spot in Emily's locker is not clean, so that he could have another chance to talk to her, and to do something right for once. However, when he tried to bump into Emily, it did not work. For she was with another. Emily was with Annie. This was the kid who had all the toys he wanted. From a space ranger to a cowboy named Woody. Which is me. Sid was so jealous that he would try to squash us toys every chance he could get. Which is why he is coming to the house right this very second. Oh no, it is too late. Uh, Sid is in the bedroom. <laughs> Sid, stop laughing a million times in a row. It is really lame to be honest with you. Not for long. I drew a picture with cranes to remind you who I am. My name is Stinky Pear. I have come to save the day. Sid, you are no match for me. I am a grape with a wooden mullet. And you know what they always say. Beware of grape with wooden mullet. That's a reference to pilots who don't do anything. I beg it as move it. If any of you are wondering about the reference, I am discussing right now, Sid. You think you could squash the grape? Well, you are a squash, and it's time for me to squash you. Oh, that is so profound I could sing a whole song about it. But remember, I have captured Sid and nobody has put Sid in jail since he is the sheriff. But Wheezy is still in trouble. We've got to save him. What are we going to do? Wait, I know. I am old and gray. I have so much experience. So out of all the toys in this room, I should be able to save him. I have ten plans that just might work. I'll start with plan number one, and if any of you have any questions or concerns, just holler. Okay, you guys know what my phone number is. You guys know how to reach out to me. My email is sassygrape104 at gmail.com. Hey, now are you all ready for my first plan? I have added the shirt. Okay, here's plan number one. We get a bunch of penguin customs so that we do not look suspicious, therefore not drawing any attention to our neighbors around us, and making ourselves look like a family or family too easy. I figured he is probably alone and just needs some penguin support. Then we grab him, have custom beaks, and save him. Any in favor of plan number one? I hear silence. That's not good. Looks like you guys are a tough crowd. Anyway, on to plan number two, I guess. Plan number two. We let Sid escape and break into a small television so that Sid thinks we're a Vida game. We act as the characters in the levels of Super Smash Bros until he turns on lullaby music on the radio and falls asleep. And then any will hear the lullaby music and sleep, therefore canceling the yard sale. Uh, saving Wheezy from danger and peril. Any in favor of plan number two? I hear silence. That's not good. Looks like you guys are a tough crowd. Anyway, on to plan number three, I guess. Plan number three, we sing so loudly and out of tune that it causes everyone in the yard sale to leave. The yard sale participants and members will run so far away from the house that they will find themselves inside a tornado in Kansas. And then Wheezy will rush inside Annie's bedroom where we are right now and thank us for courage and support. Hey, in favor of plan number three. I hear silence. That's not good. Looks like you guys are a tough crowd. Anyway, on to plan number four, I guess. Plan number four, we get Buzz Lightyear to allow us to use his spaceship with his permission, of course. And we fly to the stratosphere and change the brightness of the sky so that everyone thinks it is nighttime. I'm the night sky. Everyone will be so sleepy and they'll think that is nighty night time. And then Weezy will thank us all and be indebted to us forever. Any in favor of plan number four? Of course not, that's ridiculous. Buzz Lightyear cannot fly. He can only fall with style. Yeah, I'm just gonna pretend I did not hear that. 
I hear silence. That's not good. Looks like you guys are a tough crowd. Anyway, on to plan number five, I guess. Plan number five, we show up at the yard sale and speak to all of the humans. We admit that we are tools that can speak and politely tell them not to scream. Then we steal Wheezy from Andy's pal of tours in his yard sale and we save any other tours that will help us and we leave behind the tours who are mean to us. Then Wheezy will thank us forever. Any who are your favorite? On number five. I hear silence. That's not good. Looks like you guys are a tough crowd. Anyway, on to plan number six, I guess. Plan number six, we rush into the toy boxes that are in the yard sale. And we sell ourselves to different owners and actually participate as tools in this yard sale. Therefore, we will be able to save the tools who are in danger of this in a specific yard sale and Weezy will have no option and no choice but to thank Bills and give us ten million dollars each, any in favor of plan number six. I hear silence. That's not good. Looks like you guys are a tough crowd. Anyway, on to plan number seven, I guess. Plan number seven, we dress up as hot dogs and the crowd will be hungry and they will try to eat us. But we will escape and therefore the owners will not grab on to Weezy because of our hot dog distraction. And then Weezy will have no choice, no choice at all but to give us one hundred billion dollars to each of us because of his gratitude for saving us. Any in favor of plan number seven? I hear silence. That's not good. Looks like you guys are a tough crowd. Anyway, on to plan number eight, I guess. We are so close. There are only three plans left. So I really hope you guys will not be silent anymore and give me actual feedback. Even if it is constructive criticism, I can't take it. After all, I, I'm an old grump. That's what I'm here for. Plan number eight, we released it from prison and dress him up as a spy whose mission is to irritate the crowd that is at the yard sale. The crowd will answer all of his interrogations and questions, and he will also ask them if they could hand over the pen to him, and they will say yes, and then it can actually collaborate and bring us Wheezy. Any in favor of... Number eight. What a crazy hair! I do not approve! Yeah, I'm just gonna pretend I did not hear that. I hear silence! That's not good! Looks like you guys are a tough crowd! Anyway, on to plan number nine, guess! We were getting close! Woody, we were getting real close! I am so nervous yet so excited! Plan number nine, we have a brief chat with the producers of this film. We pretend that we are actually acting for the toy that saved Christmas instead of Veggie's toy, the full movie. And then the producers actually listen to us. Then we will tell them that we need the penguin for the bus always seen and then we Z will have no choice but to thank us. Okay, don't let me down, everyone. Any favor of plan number nine? I hear silence. That's not good. Looks like you guys are a tough crowd. Anyway, on to plan number ten. Okay, this is the last of my plans. You all better find this plan good, or your life will be as sad as raisin. But before I talk about plan number ten, I have a brief confession that I have to make regarding the ultimate silly sunk countdown episode that was filmed by Big Idea right at this film being released. Okay, okay, I rigged the election. That last bag of votes weren't official votes at all. They were all phony votes for our song. I'm sorry. It's just that well, you've got your cheeseburger song, and you've got everything else, and, well, that song is all I had. Well, number two is nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, 
That's really good. You think so? Oh, yeah. It, it sure beats the forgive o I heard that. Huh. I, I guess you're right. It is nothing to sneeze at. Oh, will you guys forgive me? Okay, oh, oh yeah, right. you we'll bet. forgive you. Astonishing contraption of silliness. Will you forgive me? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> all right, already. And now I introduce to you the very last plan of the ultimate saving wheezy plank countdown. I mean, count up, because we were counting up from one to ten. And now I have the very last plan. Which is plan and and number ten. Listen carefully. Okay, plan number ten. I stop trying to come up with my own ideas because my ideas are lousy. And we have Woody be the leader and save Weezy from this mess because it's us as the only one conscious enough out of us all. And Woody will actually save Weezy and be victorious. Buzz can help him do it he wants. Buzz seems very heroic as well. I have to hand it to you, Stinky Pod. That was the only sensible and reasonable thing you've said in the past ten minutes. We should be working together. I should not be fighting Buzz, because Buzz is who I need to save, Wheezy. <laughs> you, Woody, you haven't been nice to me. You said that I am not a space ranger, and all of that. I know, I know, I know what I've said. Okay! No. Listen, hear me out for a second. It is not about what you said. Woody, it is about what you have not said. It is not about your past, your mistakes, and your failures. It's about what you will say in the future and how you can learn from your mistakes. You must save him, Woody. You're right. I'm a sheriff. I must make it my duty to save Wheezy and all the toys at all cost. I'm coming for you, Wheezy. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 